I think that's working. It's recording. So. That's pretty nice. Are you going to mail it to me? I, I took a picture. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I can. Let's see it. But I can't find the second sheet. That's not but I, I'm sure that I am. Um, 60. I got George Kelsey, I got George Ty, I got George Catherine, I got George Morgan, I don't have values. Okay. Okay. We'll just do this until I give a decent lecture and then we'll, you can save all those, but don't send a bad one to the head. <laughs> just send a good one. Here. Um, well, we have two things to cover, and we still want to go back and play with 3 2 a bit more and find out why t is a nice function, why the time is a good function of the population, same way the population is a good function of the time, right? That's the whole agenda for 3 2 to go backwards and forward between time and population. Okay, we'll do that later. Today we have two things to fix up in 4.3. And uh, yeah, anytime you want to discuss those questions from, was it 4.1 or 4, that I gave you, or 4.2, whatever. Anytime you want to discuss those questions, you're welcome to. You know, call me on the phone, keep me after class Friday, which is when I have time, etc. Okay. You can catch me in the, sometimes I'm in here Tuesday and Thursday evening, uh, around 8, 7, 7 to 8. You just call me on telephone, 2529 I don't like being in here Tuesday, Thursday evening, but I can't help it. I feel like I have to deal with all this email, and our email is very slow when you go from home. Okay, so here's a, um, uh, let's see here. Let's go 4 and 3 and go the whole thing. A-N. Homogeneous refers to the right side equals zero. That's what homogeneous refers to, in case you're curious. Because in section 4.4, .4, the right side is not going to be zero. And we call it an inhomogeneity. Okay. And if you had 207, AX equals zero, homogeneous. Do 
we spell college 207? Yeah. Okay. And there is actually a finite dimensional linear operator A, an n by n matrix A, which you can associate with this thing. I'm nicer than the book, at least I'm telling you that there's really a uh, literal, it's not just an analogy, there's actually a literal operator A you can associate with this. I'll show it to you later just for a two by two system, okay? But we don't need to know that. And we go, um, uh, A N D N Y. Just to remind ourselves what we did. D squared Y. And D, it's just another word for D, D, D. And we also say try Y equals E to the ST. Y prime equals what? Solutions. Y prime equals? X. Brownie points. So I'm going too slow because I'm reviewing everything. And this says a n times the n derivative. We agreed we might just go right on the other side, just as long as we know what it means. So we have P of D times Y equals zero. And what do we have here? We have A N S to the N E to the S T plus dot 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 plus a to S squared E to the ST plus A1 S E to the ST plus A naught times 1. That's never zero, right? And so we can write S where we root where we originally had differentiation and that theme is continued into chapter seven where we talk about the Laplace transform and we'll, we won't have enough time, we'll have some time for the Laplace transform but not enough. That thing's never zero, so we have P of S equals zero. P of S equals characteristic polynomial, right? Equals A N S to the N plus dot 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 plus A two S squared plus A one S plus A naught equals characteristic polynomial, right? And that's the agenda. Okay? We don't need the A to the N minus 1 S? Yeah, we do. Don't, you I, do. I, I, do I you need an Yeah, it's just dot, dot, dot. Every, we need everything. Okay.
dot 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 right okay okay that would be nice if you could suppress this or that but you can't okay you can't suppress okie doke and solutions will be we should write this what the heck are the solutions Solutions y1 I'll call characteristic solutions characteristic solutions y1 equals e to the s1 t dot 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 y n equals e to the s n t and uh oh yeah that's right equals where's the equal sign so we have all these different characteristic solutions right there should be n of them because it should be n roots right and zero equals p of s1 dot 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 equals p of sn so that's what we did in our example are we agreed okay and the general solution came from linearity just write linearity what did we get y was equal to c1 times y1 plus dot 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 we added up the characteristic solutions and multiplied by constant because of the linear word. Is that okay? <laughs> That's what we did in that second order example. And then we, we set the initial data and so forth, right? Amen. But what if See the problem? We have n solutions, n characteristic solutions. The order equals n, right? Order equals n. And characteristic solutions, right? Equals the number of characteristic solutions because of the degree of the polynomial, right? Uh-oh. So we'll take a simple example. Mm -hmm. And on the side, we can write the d squared y equals zero, or we like f squared, right? Either way, right? <coughs> f squared e to the sp equals zero. e of s equals f squared. Same old story, except 
characteristic zeros. Oops. S1 equals zero. Well, it's only one characteristic solution. Get the idea? E to the zero T, right? Characteristic solution. Y1 equals E to the zero T equals one, uh-oh. Y2 equals the same. Yeah. We don't smarten up. Right? And we even need two characteristic solutions and the order is two, right? Well, we're not going to actually get a second characteristic solution, but in the language of linear algebra, we need a second linearly independent solution. So we'll fill out what we call a space of solutions. We need two solutions that aren't the same, right? Okay, so shall we go in blue, hit you with a punchline? Let's go to Calc 1. Calc 1. You want to go I? I like to go Z backwards. Differentiate, and you get Y prime T. I mean, if you differentiate backwards, right? Antiderivative, right? You want to write D inverse the other way? Antiderivative. Don't be confused. It just means antiderivative. D. Be confused by fancy notation. I mean, antiderivative. Okay. What is the antiderivative of zero? Hmm? Constant. Okay. Let's not put that confusing D inverse sign. I just did that to give you a new idea of what goes on, right? Well, let's just do this. What's y of t equal? dt plus another constant. No. We have the one b times one, right? This that's interesting. Okay, so here's our solution. Solution basis will come. No. Well, solution basis y one equals e. Y2 The basis is just a linear algebra term, okay? You don't need to get fancy with it. Y2 equals You can call this a characteristic solution if you like, but it doesn't look very characteristic because it's got a multiple of t in it, right? Okay. So here's our general solution. Y of t equals c times t. Try 
it this way. Y of t is equal to e t plus b. Why did I do that? By the way, this is what? This is, uh, oh no, we want acceleration is zero. That's too easy. We want an acceleration equals 10 meters squared. 10 meters per second squared, right? Gravitation. So we didn't get it. We use that here. Okay. So we solved that. Uh oh. We have to erase this beautiful program here. I think the most important part is um, where it's, uh, well, you tell me where. You're going to have to erase the whole program. this we're gonna to have to check this we don't have to check this because it's calc one right we know this is gonna work right we're gonna to have to check this because I'm just working by analogy you can derive this if you want when you derive it you're gonna forget the derivation and you get to the Laplace transform I don't think we'll actually have time because we've gone a bit slow uh, this semester just to uh, kind of give the circumstances a bit of credit. But you get to a class transform and you can derive this in a, in a second. Okay, whereas if you derive this now, uh, you'll forget everything that it's about. <laughs> and you won't learn from it. Okay, so now we have characteristic values. Oops. Values in parentheses because there's only one. S equals negative three, right? Characteristic values, they come from P of S equals zero, right? Come from P of S equals zero. Now books are overly fascinated with this and I can't change it. If you look in your, in your book, they're practically all full of these multiple zeros. Not the most important case, but let's just take a, take a look. Have a P of S equals zero, characteristic values. S equals negative three. Let's see, S plus three squared equals zero. S equals negative three. Oh no, 
right? Same thing, right? Oh boy. Well, let's take a look at the uh, characteristic solution. Same story. Y1 equals e to the minus 3t. Y2 equals Y1, right? Same problem as before, right? Y2 equals same. Uh-oh, what are we going to do? Let's take a look at that solution basis. We have t e to the zero t. e to the minus 3t this time, right? And what are we going to do? Y2. What do we do over there? We multiply. You see, I made it. See what we did? Now, there's no reason it should be that way. Why should this work? You can, you can derive it with what we know. But here's one reason it should work this way. Without a, a clear derivation. Without, you can de derive it using various versions of the D operator and various fancy algebraic versions of the differentiation operator and the integration operator. And, uh, and you'll forget the derivation, all right? So uh, why should it work? Well, how about this? Uh, let's pretend there should be a rule. Let's just pretend there should be a rule. If there should be a rule, It's because it's got to collapse to a true statement when s is zero. So if we're looking for a rule, we don't have much choice. We don't say there is a rule yet. We say we have to do. But we're not assuming there is a rule. We're just saying if there is a rule, it's got to collapse to this because we already know this, right? So this has got to be the rule, but there is a rule. You see my reasoning? My reasoning? It's a pretty, it's pretty good reasoning. It's not exactly airtight. But the rule has to be something that collapses to this rule. All right? Because this we know to be true from job one. So if there is a rule, this is the rule. So you go to the, the uh, chapters, section 7.3. And you'll see exactly why this is the rule. Okay. All right. So our general solution is y equals c1 y1 plus c2 y2. In other words, y of c equals C1 plus C2C. And when we factor out the E to the FT, we get, so you can, your book will tell you, think of the solution basis and then just expand. But I will tell you something a little bit different.
And the only reason I tell you this, uh, write it this way, you can write it either way, whichever more convenient. What does this say? What's the, the degree of s plus 3 squared? The degree of s plus 3 squared? 2. two. Okay, what's this? This is a polynomial with two, three choices. Degree 1, two, three choices, right? So y of t equals poly with 2 three choices, in other words, one degree less times either the S or the D. That's my point. It doesn't really matter how you write it, but this is a polynomial with two three choices, times e to the S T, and the multiplicity of the zero was two. Okay. So we do a quick example, then I uh, go to, uh, this is a shame because I wanted to show you how to handle complex zeros and multiple zeros all in one day. And of course, we're not going to have time for it. Okay. Let's keep this nice thingy up here. Um, can you guys help me? Uh, no, but I can help me. I gotta be sleazy. Did I erase too cool too soon? Hope not. I'm gonna be sleazy. S cubed again three one is six, am I right? Three three times two over over uh, one factor. No, three one is three. You guys know how, what, what this symbol means? It means three factorial. You take the one, and these two have to add up to three, right? So that's three, right? Three S squared. Have you ever seen this notation if you haven't? Three factorial, you take the one, and then you have to supplement and make it add up to whatever you see there. It's Pascal's. Uh, notation or whatever, right? 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 1 times 2 times 1 gives you 3, right? So how about this? We can go back to black because we got the idea. This is sleazy. Well, it's not too sleazy, but it's a bit sleazy. Y core of T, let's see here. If I multiply by S plus three, Plus one. How am I going to make this work out to be simple? I'm going to cheat. Uh -huh. 
Your book does this all the time. So now we have, let's just write it out so that you guys can see d to the fourth plus 3d cubed plus 3d squared plus 1d plus 0 times y equals 0. Okay. So that is uh, gives us p of d y equals zero. Right? Okay. And p of d four. equals d times d cubed plus let's write the d on the other side so you can see how simple this is p of d equals d cubed times d D, right? And D, right? So like this. And Characteristic solutions. Come from EBS equals zero, right? So we have S equals zero. And we already did. This is S plus three cubed, right? Right? Isn't that what we did over there? S plus three cubed? Over there. So S cubed plus S squared plus. Well, let's work. Let's factor it out. So you see, this was s plus three cubed. Okay, over on the other side. Over on the other fourth. Uh oh. S equals zero. Okay. Now, um, characteristic solutions. Y1, which is what? E to the zero T. One, one. Y2, Y3. Yeah. Remember S plus one cube? Excuse me? S plus one cube. Like when you're right next to S equals zero. Why should there be an S equals one? No, I mean S plus one cube if you factorize it. Instead of three and one. Yeah. Isn't it S plus one? If it was s plus one cubed, there would be s. It'd be e. It'd be s equals negative one, right? What do you want? That's, I mean, oh. Yes. Uh, if you look at the other number, it can't be. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. What is s plus three cubed? Plus. Uh, 
three one. Oh no, plus uh, let's see, a plus s a a, a plus b cubed. Oh, I forgot the three. Okay. We've got to do that. I forgot the three. This is supposed to be uh, this is supposed to be three uh, s squared and nine s. Yeah, I forgot the three. She's right. Brownie points, Catherine. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna uh, be sleazy, and it, it's very easy to be sleazy here. One. I wanted to keep the three, but that's out. One. Catherine is perfectly right. There's supposed to be, I didn't expand in the right way. Did we clear that up? I wanted to keep the e to the minus 3t, but that's all right. So let's do that thing right. S plus 3t equals s cubed plus 3 1 s 1 times 3 s to the 2 times 3 to the 1 plus 3 2 s to the 1 times 3 to the 2 plus 3 3 S to the zero times three to the three. She's perfectly right. And this is supposed to say three three will say S to the three times three to the zero. You see how to expand? If you've never seen that expansion, now you have. Each term, you have the, the three one term, you go S to the two times three. Whichever way, the symmetric expansion. You get the idea? So there should be a nine here, a three year, a nine year, 27 there. A plus B to the N, I'm getting distracted, equals um, the sum of uh, N K. A to the K B and And the sum ranges from zero to N. Zero, one, two, N. Get the idea. And N K is the thing that you form this. So I messed that up, that's what I'm saying. But now it's okay. We have three one, uh, F three to the one, S to the two, right? It doesn't matter whether you use A or B first, right? It's gotta make sense, whether you call B plus A or A plus B. So now we have uh, three to the two, S to the one, three two. Get the idea? Uh, 3 to 3 has to the 0 on 3 to 3, right? Doesn't matter. I, I, I went backwards with it, but it doesn't matter. Okay, enough of the, the binomial theorem. Have I replaced the 3 by the 1 every, everywhere I need to? Okay, that was a bit of a distraction. Thank you. Those are the characteristic solutions. And we don't have enough, right? Order equals four. But aren't there four because there's zero and then negative one three times? Yeah, I mean, what do we need? To, what we need four. But isn't that four? Because y3 and y4 are also negative one. Yeah. Look. Here's what I'm saying. 
Let's erase this. We've got four characteristic zeros. But we've only got two. S1 equals zero. S2 equals negative one. And S4. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. But characteristic solutions, we've only got two. Y1 equals e to the zero of t. I got distracted with the one. And now, right? So far, so good. Yeah. Y2 equals e to the minus 1t. Am I right? No others. No others. They're both the same, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the order equals 4. We have two characteristic solutions. Okay. So we erase the calc 1 derivation. That was like the key to everything. So is that why you're using three variables or three constants? Because you need. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Okay, solution basis. I just want to be. I want to see if you guys can guess. Y one equals one, right? Equals e to the zero t. Just let the minus up where we got it. Y2 e to the minus 1t, thanks to Catherine. Otherwise, we'd be talking nonsense by now. Look at what, what do we do with this thing? What was the next step? Y3 was, should be what? Brownie points, whoever said that. And what should Y4 be now? <laughs> How many degrees of freedom are we going to have now? We're going to have one, two, three, four. Just what we wanted. General solution. And now here's my point. Y of T. Equals C1 times 1 constant plus C2 T e to the minus 3T plus, oh, I have to erase this nice Y of T equals CT plus B. This one I want to use it, of course. C3 plus, uh oh, I missed the big one. So I have to erase this. That plus C2 plus C3 or if you want to write it this way, C1 times 1, you try C1 plus. C2 plus C3T plus C4T squared. How many degrees of freedom in that polynomial? Still one instead of three. What am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that one more time. Class is dismissed. Of course, class is dismissed anyhow. God. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Of course, I'm 
trying to draw an analogy with this, but we, we don't need that. Okay. So y of t equals, we'll just say t1. We should write times 1 just to make sure that we know that we got to be to 0 of t. Plus a polynomial. with how many free choices times e to the minus 1c e to the minus 1c to the minus 1 how many free choices do you see? Hmm? Three. three and that's the rule what was the order is this zero? Three. How many free choices does it account for? Three. What was the order of this polynomial? The order of the differential equation? Four. How many free choices we need? Four. Get why I say, I don't care whether you write it this way, or this way, or this way, or this way, right? But when you think of it, you think, where are the free choices coming from? I'm going to have to do the binomial theorem all over again. Well, we only have a second, so let's write down the inside. We'll say S. It doesn't matter if it's plus or minus. Is that what we mean? S minus alpha the K has something else equals P of S. Is that what we mean? Okay. That's our question. That's what our question today was, wasn't it? They come from Multiplication of the characteristic solution by polynomial with K three choices. That's the conclusion. Sub-solution, we'll call it. The sub-solution equals C0 plus C1T plus CK minus 1, C to K minus 1 minus C. Is that what we did today? Put all the free 
choice of the next. So it's the simplest possible thing. You couldn't have a simpler solution, could you? Where do three choices come from? Multiply by one, multiply by t, multiply by t squared, and just keep going on, make it a polynomial, just like you did in high school. And that's why engineers like constant coefficient, linear, homogeneous differential equations. Amen. Brilliant lecture with the exception that I expanded the binomial theorem wrong. <laughs> One little problem, eh? <laughs> Thank you. Can we keep that lecture or, or, or drop it?